um, it's pretty much about balance, getting balance. I'm not standing here saying, get off social media. I'm on social media. You need to look at your goals, your dreams, and you need to consider the space and the environment that you're in. You're in the academy here. There's a whole lot of other academies in the country. There's thousands of rugby players that want the same thing as you. The guy that's going to make it, is it the guy that spends more time working on his craft or is it the guy that's going to spend most of his time on social media? I said in the beginning, if you work on something and you guys agree, you, will you improve? If you spend a lot of time on something, are you guaranteed improvement? Not always, but you're more likely to improve. So, what would you choose there? The guys that said they want to play province under 21, if we were to spread time, what would you choose between the two? In getting that balance, I'm not saying get rid of Instagram uh, or, or WhatsApp. In getting that balance, you should conduct yourself in a way that WhatsApp does not get in the way of your dreams. And if that's all your goals, that's all I'm saying, boys. Eh? Um, if, some, if you're sitting in a meeting and the coach is talking and you're on WhatsApp, would you think that's getting in the way of your goals? All right. If you go home and we all, we're all all on lockdown and you're supposed to go run at 1.2 in the morning, instead you choose to be on WhatsApp, do you think that's getting in the way? Right. So there is a time and place for social media, right? But I just want you to think about it. It's not the same for everyone, but there's some guys who are a little bit more talented. There's some guys that need to work a little bit harder. You need to decide what's more important and how much time you want to put on certain things. If you go to a meeting, if you, if you go to a hotel and the Springboks are playing maybe in two, three days time and you find them in the lobby, do you think they'll be sitting on their phones? They will be. Don't get it wrong. They'll be sitting. Guys in between sessions, in between meetings, Russell's been there. Those guys sit and it's frustrating sometimes. They sit, they're on their phones. They do it. Springboks, best players in the world. I mean, I'm sure even the old legs and other sports. But the key for me, boys, is one thing they probably have gotten right is the balance. When it's time to work, there's no excuses. When they need to submit times for training, they submit the times for training. If, if they need to come back fitter, they come back fitter. The guys get the balance right. So even the best sportsmen in the world, they're on social media. You'll see Sonny Bull, he, he tweets, he does all those things. But then the next thing, he tweets a video of him running on his own, training, because he knows he wants to be a better rugby player. So the key thing, boys, that I wanted you guys to understand today is balance. Floyd Mayweather, 50 fights, never lost a match, um, talks a lot, talks about money, but one thing he had, he got right, is the balance. Again, to go back to your question, if you ask me, you know, do I look at inspiration for you know, at different teams, then, then I would say yes, a lot, a lot of different sports. You can know, golf, uh, look at a guy's golf swing that might help you with passing, some techniques there, you can do you know, you know, different type of stuff. And then you know, I'll just show you one or two clips in terms of, say, just the Golden State Warriors. So you can take some stuff from the from the team, so what they do as a team, or then you can take individuals in the team. So just again, back to Steph Curry, just about people and his story, and I'll, I'll just play this clip and just listen to, to what he says. Jeff, best shooter in the NBA right now? I think he is. Best oh, three-point shooter. Well, it, who's it the best is. shooter overall? LeBron? No, Kevin Durant is a better... Really? I'll, I'll take this guy because he's pretty special. And in a few years in the NBA, he's become a superstar. He is the first Twitter star of the NBA. When he goes off, everybody goes to Twitter and says, you've got to watch the Warriors. He's gone off. And then the next day, there are more Steph Curry clips 
going around and the days that he goes off than any player in the NBA. You got to see what he did last night. But as easy as he makes the game look, his road to greatness has not been anything close to as smooth as you might imagine. How did you handle the disappointment of those bigger schools not coming after you? Um, I used it as motivation that summer before my senior year in high school to just just play my game and, and you know the right coach and the right college would come and make themselves known that they wanted me. And I heard the same stuff outside going into the NBA. I'm too small, not athletic enough, can't play defense, not strong enough. I was nervous. Um, obviously, making that transition is a big deal. With the seventh pick in the 2009 NBA draft, the Golden State Warriors select Stephen Curry from Davidson College. I told him he's too small. So how many, how many, how many people do you think told Jason Colby he's too small in his career? Okay, so story that you can take out of a team what you learn from individuals is, is in, there's, there's going to be tough times. There's going to be times that people tell you you're not good enough or you're not a good enough defender. Now that's a weakness in your game. And then you, know, you change the world just by changing his story and his mindset of what he wanted to achieve. Okay. Golden State Warriors, Warriors they brought in uh, Kevin Durant. Durant. Um, and one thing that you will see from the best players in the world is they work the hardest. So it doesn't matter what they've achieved, is they will keep working at their craft, keep fine-tuning, keep, keep uh, trying to improve. Okay, they don't just arrive, I'm a great player, and then stop working. Okay, so just again a clip from what I've taken from this team and, and from uh, Kevin. Name the last time a player this caliber came onto a team this dominant. He wants to do it, but he's worried about the reaction. The kind of gravy train, just a scapegoat move to try to ease your weight. He's done everything wrong. No, man, you know what? It might not be his life. I can't, I can't just skate by and get through life without like really having to work for something. You know what I'm saying? I need a dollar, 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 that's what I need. Hey, hey. Well, I need a dollar, 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 that's what I need. Hey, hey. Well, I need a dollar, 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 that's what I need. Hey, hey. Well, I need a dollar, 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 that's what I need. Hey, hey. Well, I need a dollar, 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 that's what I need. And if I share with you my story, would you share your dollar with me? Steve was hitting it, so I was able to get my rhythm working on him. Like one of the most skilled players ever, so you know, all the little one you pull up stuff, pick and roll stuff, he critiques, he texts me after most games, and we talk about stuff we need to work on, and just balance, and you see why I do a lot of squats and shots, and mainly get my core right, balance right, you know what I'm saying, so he's a guru out there, we call him Yoda, <laughs> got my Yoda working on with Steve. You know, when we're working out, I don't really think about how good he is. I just try to, you know, plant seeds in his mind to remind him on little things that, you know, sometimes we forget about and that can hopefully allow him to improve and to reach his potential, which, you know, he's already exceeded. When I watch him play the game, uh, it's incredible to see how he puts it all together. You know, his size and skill set is something we've never really seen in this league. We've seen very skilled big guys before, tall guys, but not with his combination of size, skill, and athleticism, agility, quickness, ability to play multiple positions, and to be as accurate as he is. Kids are saying he's a unicorn. <laughs> I'll go with that. Yeah, I was up since 8 p.m. last night. I needed to sweat a little bit to wake me up, get my adrenaline pumping a little bit. I just needed to get on the court. I can tell you, it's millions of shots now. 
not thousands. He's probably put millions of shots up. He's done that his whole life. I mean, that's him. If I were a, a young player today, he's the kind of guy that I would want to emulate. You're talking about a guy that works as hard as anybody at his trade, a guy that works as hard as anybody at trying to get better every day. He's never satisfied. He's a man that's on a mission to win a championship. Durant, pull up from the elbow. McCall, back up Durant. Durant, good luck for three. Got it. As the Warriors are headed to the NBA Finals for the third consecutive year. Kompolov, a great player that just keeps working, does millions of shots. And in that clip, it was about the morning before the NBA Finals, the game four. So it's eight hours before the time. He's, he's on the court, he's shooting, he's getting his, his eye in for the game. So he's never satisfied with you know, how while he's playing at the moment, he just wants to become better. A lot of the decisions I was making were making a big impact in my life. And you know when you're young and you get everything, you got the cousin knows I was 22, 23, driving a Range Rover and you know the things, life's easy. And then you, you end up going off the rails and I think that's when um, things started happening that were affecting me on the field. You know, um, you lose a car, you lose that, you lose that, snap my keys, came back, first, second game back, snap my hammy. And then like life got real in a way. For me what was important was the people around me and what I learned is that um, a lot that I had back then, I took for granted and um, I made so many mistakes and um, I always put people on a pedestal and never thought I could get there. Because he knew I struggled a lot of my mind and a lot of technical stuff until I just let go and you know, you just trust yourself. You never know what you can achieve. Um, like for instance, like I always struggled with my weight and you know, just a, it's a small thing but in lockdown, I lost eight kilograms, and you know it just shows what your mind can do. And sometimes you, you see things, and you see people in certain places, and you think, oh, it's like you'll never be able to get there. But I think that there's someone who said, um, "Show me your friends, and I'll show you your future." So always surround yourself with people um, that are better than you, people who have a different mindset, people who have a positive mindset. And like you'll see, like it takes it takes a long time, um, but like each day really really counts. It's like losing weight, you know. You're on a diet for two weeks and you don't see a difference, and you give up, you know. So if you're working on your dream, if you're working on your kicking, if you're working on your throwing, you know, those are the little things that you need to do. If you feel shut, it's cold. Like I didn't want to run this morning, but I got up and I ran, you know. Even though no one will see or whatever, but for me, I know inside. That there's that little bit of, you know, growth, a little bit, every single step takes. After three weeks of dieting, you look in the mirror and you're like, geez, you know, you start, then you start feeding yourself positive, positive messages the whole time. And that's, I think that's how I started to grow as a person. And like, you just, you steal your ears, I mean, the ears and your eyes, you know, from people that you look up to, but you don't put them on that pedestal. You want to be better than them and you want to, you want to be much better than them. Like what you guys are doing here and what you guys want to hopefully achieve, like it's not that easy like for anyone in any position. If you can think of any top person, I think with us now the big mistakes we make as the youth is that we want to be somewhere overnight and that's not how it works. Um, you can look at the big, the best CEOs, the best coaches the best, they don't sleep at night, you guys are dosing, these guys on computers, they're cutting clips and it's, it doesn't happen overnight, you know, it's got to be something that that you really want to achieve because you end up being, sorry, I'm not saying, um, you can only be something you truly want to be if you do it every day. So if you want to be a, a boxer or whatever, you can't be a boxer in the week and then be a party or a rock star on the weekend, you know. It's a complete discipline the whole time. You might get away with it for, for a while, like I did. But then, then you start getting the cracks. And the cracks get bigger and bigger and bigger. And before you even know it, it's too late. 
So I think, you know, from my side, like, whatever you guys want to achieve, it might not even be rugby, um, in your personal life, like, like, never too late to start, and every single bit counts, you know, so, yeah, that's, that's it from my side, guys. What is what you say is the toughest chosen number to play the game? Toughest? Chosen number to play and play the game. It's probably the guy I play and train with Bongi. Bongi. He's probably cutting me a green one. Yeah, that guy's a beast. He's a good man. Yeah, that's why I was on the bench for so long. Thank you. 